Hey guys, Andy Robertson here and I'm super excited to, to give you this second part video in a three part series on how to effectively prepare for the CQ exam. The first video is all about active retrieval which is essentially just recalling information from memory. If you didn't watch that video, go back, check that out. That's a really important video to help you prepare for the CQ exam. Today's video is on a second study technique that has been demonstrated through, through over 100 years of research to be incredibly effective to help you both learn something and remember it in the long term, and that is called spaced repetition, or you'll hear it called spaced practice or distributed practice. Anyways, that's the topic of today's video. I wanna start by talking about forgetting. You know, forgetting and remembering are two, two sides of the same coin, and it's a really important concept that we have to talk about. I wanna talk about the forgetting curve and, and what the science shows is the best way to interrupt the forgetting curve so that you can remember things longer. I also want to touch touch base on what we talked about yesterday in terms of a desirable difficulty. You know, a lot of research shows that when you when you make the study process just a little bit harder by doing things like taking a practice test or spacing out your practice, that little extra difficulty is what is what creates long-term memory of a topic and long-term understanding. And so I think that's a really important idea for you as a student is to not just take the easy route. Don't just reread your textbook or rewatch that video lecture. Make it a little bit harder, right? And when you do that, you actually understand those concepts, you remember them, you master them so that on exam day you're successful and you can use them at work. Okay, let's go and get started. By the way, this whole lecture comes down to a single question. I want to ask you this question. If you only had 70 minutes to learn a topic, would you rather spend 70 minutes studying that topic in a single setting, or would you like to study for 10 minutes a day for seven days straight? And the answer to that question is this idea of space repetition. The science is very clear. When you space out your study sessions, you're, you learn something deeper. You have a better understanding of it later on down the road. And that's really important for you because the way you structure your study plan and the way you prepare for the CQE exam is, is, has an impact on how well you learn the material and ultimately how well you do on exam day. And by the way, I wanna start off with a quote to help you understand spaced repetition and all the science behind it. Here's a quote from John Donlosky. He says, the spacing practice effect is robust. Sapita et al. 2006 reviewed 254 studies involving more than 14,000 participants altogether. Overall, students recalled more after spaced study, 47%, than after mass study, 37%. And that, that goes back to the question I just, just asked you. Would you rather mass your preparation into a single study session on one day, or would you rather space your study out over time? And, and the research is very clear. When you space your study out over time, uh, it's more effective, you learn better, and you remember things better in the long run. Okay, so let's talk about forgetting. You know, I'm sure you've had this experience. You learn something new, maybe you take a class on it, and then a few days later, somebody asks you what you learned or what the topic was about, and you struggle to remember it. You've essentially forgotten what you've learned. And this is a, a very much a human experience. We all forget things. In fact, uh, scientists have quantified this and they call it the forgetting curve. A, a German psychologist named Hermann Ebbinghaus uh, first discovered this or, or uncovered this back in the, in the late 1800s. And he essentially created what we now know as the forgetting curve. And so researchers have essentially studied the rate at which we forget and they've compared different study methods against each other to compare uh, the effectiveness of those study techniques to see how well we remember the material or how much we forget. And so the, the forgetting curve is a really, plays a really important part in this idea of spaced repetition because the, what the research shows is that the reason spaced retrieval works is that you first study a concept and then you immediately begin to forget it, okay? And then what happens is, is if you wait a certain period of time you, and you actually allow yourself to forget that material and then you, you restudy it or you, you retake a practice exam, because you've forgotten it, it takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of, of extra mental energy to recall that memory, to retrieve that memory from, from your long-term memory bank. And that little extra effort of recalling a memory that was nearly forgotten is actually what strengthens the memory. And that's the difference between cramming your studying into one session or spacing it out over time. When we space it out over time, we're actually allowing ourselves to forget a little bit. And because you've forgotten that material, 
it requires a little bit extra energy to, to retrieve that information from memory. And that's what triggers your brain to actually strengthen that memory and form a, a long-term you know, neural connection in your brain so, to say like, hey, that, that memory is important, let's remember that. And then essentially what you do is after you retrieve that information, you recall it, you wait again, and again you allow yourself to forget. Now the beauty is, is that after you retrieve something from memory, you, you don't forget as quickly. And then what happens over time is if you retrieve that information again, let's say you wait a, another day, and you retrieve that information again after, after a period of forgetting, again you strengthen that memory. And so again what the research shows is that after, after a few sessions of, of spacing out your practice, your forgetting curve actually slows down, right? You don't forget at the same rate as you initially did. And then in the long term what ends up happening is if you, if you space out your repetitions enough, you end up forming a long-term memory of this particular topic to the point where you can recall it really quickly and really easily. You're not forgetting that information you know, immediately after you study. That's the beauty of the forgetting curve. By the way, here are a bunch of studies that demonstrate the benefits of spaced repetition and spaced repetition has proven to be effective across a number of different topics including biology, advertising, mathematics, history, foreign language, spelling, surgical skills, statistics. In fact, let me share a piece of research with you uh, specifically associated with a statistics class and for, for again if you're preparing for the CQ exam statistics is the hardest topic on the exam and so this piece of research directly applies to you and your preparation for the exam okay so this research was done back in 2011 there was a, a university that was making a, a curriculum change to a statistics course and what they had to do is they had to take a, a what was originally a six month long course and they had to, to deliver that exact same content in an eight week time period. And this was the perfect opportunity to, to measure uh, or gauge the impact that spacing out a course uh, has on the student's experience and has on the learning process. And then at the end of the course, the students were given an open-ended conceptual test on the material that they learned throughout the course. And here are the results of that test. And what you can see here is that for the students who spaced their study out over a six month time period, they had a much stronger understanding of the material than if you essentially tried to cram all that information into an eight week period. And again, this, has a, a, this, this can have direct application to the CQ exam. You can attempt to prepare for the entire exam in eight weeks. I've seen people do it in two months. I've seen people do it in three months but it requires a certain amount of cramming. You have to put in, you know, usually two or three hours a day to prepare. What I recommend is that you space that out over time so that on exam day you have a better understanding of the material and so that you don't have to dedicate, you know, an hour or two hours a day to the exam prep process. By the way, the other tip I like to give here is that because statistics is the hardest topic on the exam, I always recommend that you put statistics first in your study process. And that way, over time, as you're, as you're studying other topics like continuous improvement or the quality system or risk management, you can always go back and take a practice test on statistics and you're getting that spaced repetition, right? You, you study it, you put it first, you kind of allow yourself to forget, and then you, you take another practice exam. And yes, that's gonna be difficult because you've forgotten it, but it's that extra effort, that extra energy that goes into, hey, is this, hey, are we talking about SPC here? Are we talking about process capability? It's that struggle that actually builds long-term memory so that on exam day, you have this stuff in your long-term memory and you know it and you're ready to, to do well on exam day. By the way, here's another piece of research that was done back in 2011. And this was done uh, with students who were, who were learning a new language. They were learning Swahili. And the students were, were split up into four different groups. The first group only studied these new words a single time. That was, that was, this is kind of the control group. They only studied the material a single time. The second group studied the material and then were asked to retrieve that information from memory. This is called the recall group. The third group was, was obviously shown the word and then, then they were asked to retrieve it from memory once and then they were asked to retrieve it from memory three additional times. This is called the repeated mass group. This is like you sitting down and, and taking a quiz on process capability after having learned about it and doing you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 questions. You're essentially just massing your practice there, right? And the fourth group, and this was the most interesting, is they, they learned the word, they recalled it once, 
and then and then at different points throughout the throughout the study process they were asked to recall it again and they were allowed to forget the word over time and this was called the repeated spaced group because they did do they did retrieve the the information from memory three or four times but they were allowed to space it out right the software intentionally spaced out the the retrieval so that they were allowed to to forget and you can see the results here there is a massive difference in performance here and you can see that for those who just repeated their their massing they, they just repeated that that recall it had very little additional benefit because their their memory of that topic was already very high and they didn't allow themselves to forget but for those who, who were in the fourth group, the repeated spacing group, they were allowed to forget the word and they were asked to retrieve it again. And that, that additional retrieval practice after a little bit of forgetting made a huge difference when they ended up taking the final exam. And you can see they, 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 they scored nearly 80% on their final retrieval. And, and this is basically what I want to cover next, which is how do you incorporate this idea of spaced repetition into your study plan? And so what I recommend to everybody is to try to set aside let's say 30 minutes a day. Now every day of the week, I think you should be learning a new topic. So let's say each day has a different topic. And, and on those days when you're learning a new topic, you should be taking a practice exam. I think that's a no brainer. I think if you, if you don't believe me, go back and watch the first video, uh, active retrieval and practice exams is a fantastic way to both learn something new and remember it in the long term. That's really important. But then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're spacing out your retrieval. So let's say on Tuesday, you also quiz yourself on what you learned on Monday. And then let's say on Wednesday, you also quiz yourself on, on what you learned on Tuesday. Now here we are on Thursday. I think you should obviously test yourself on what you learned Thursday, but then to get a little spaced practice, also quiz yourself on what you learned on Monday and what you learned on Wednesday. And so what you're doing is you're kind of spacing out your retrieval so that you're kind of mixing up your practice, you're allowing yourself to forget a little bit, and that's what triggers kind of the long-term memory and, and long-term true mastery of a topic. By the way, this is exactly how I designed my course, the CQE Masterclass. Every day comes with a practice test, and every day also weaves in other questions from previous topics so that you get that spaced practice. Again, to, to interrupt the forgetting curve and to maximize your learning and your long-term memory. Again, so that on exam day, you are just super prepared to pass that exam. All right, if you enjoyed that, hit that like button down below so that other people just like you can find this, this awesome content. And if you wanna be on this journey to become a CQE, hit that subscribe button. That way, as I publish new videos, you get notified and you can watch those videos and grow and learn and, and become a CQE and pass that exam. All right, have a great day. I will be in touch and I'll see you again. Bye.